This is just one piece of a multi-part course working with actions inside of Moho Pro 13. If you'd like more information on this course and to receive 20% off, click the link in the top comment. Looking at this rig, it's pretty complete. However, there are a couple things I would like to do just to make the process of animation easier. I want to add a couple more controls to the rig so that way I can easily use a dial to control the hands as well as the mouth. So let's first come over here and make sure that we are on the bone layer for the character, which we are. And I want to click off so that nothing is selected. Now let's use the add bone tool and I'm going to come over here to the front hand, hold and shift, click and drag and move up just like this to create a dial that goes straight up. Using the select bone tool, I can click on that dial and name this one F dot hand and then hit enter. It appears I actually have a bone already named F dot hand because you can see it goes to F dot hand too. And that's because this one is labeled F dot hand. So let's just be a little bit more specific with that and name it F dot hand switch and then hit enter. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the other side. Let's just click off, create a new bone and click and drag and move up. And you could link this to this hand if you wanted to. So when the hand moves, this bone goes along with it. But I find it easier to keep the controls separated from any of the bones and just work with them independently. So here we're just going to name this one B dot hand switch. And then we have the mouth. And again, we were controlling this before with the switch panel. However, since we're working with a lot of dials anyway, I just find this to be a little bit more intuitive. So we can click and drag up on this one with no bones selected to start and name this one mouth switch. So now let's come over here to the first dial we just created, which is the F dot hand switch and go into our bone constraints and I'm just going to put this to negative 30 and 30 and then close. Now let's come over here and create a new action and making sure that this bone is selected when we create the action allows us to jump right into the control dial and we can just click that new action. You can see that F dot hand switch is now in the actions list. It is referring to itself as a smart action. And we can come in here now and make our corrections. So first, I'm just going to grab this dial and go all the way here to the back like that. So that way we can create a keyframe on one and it's at its highest extreme going to the left. Now, I'm just going to come in and move this up two frames and then come in and bring it over like so. So we have the dial going like this. Next, we're going to come over here to the layers, come over here to the body and bring it down and locate front hand. Right click on front hand and you can see that we have four poses for the hand. So I'll actually create another keyframe for this, but that's easy to correct, which I'll be showing you here. We'll just start with this one, open hand back. Now we want to go up to frame two, which you can see we are on frame two right here. We're going to right click and change this to point B, go to frame three, hand relaxed, go to frame four, fist top. So now if we page back, you can see this is how it's working out. Now remember, we didn't quite get the bone all the way to frame four. So let's go back here to that Chad bone layer and making sure we are on this bone, just selecting that bone with the select bone tool allows us to come in here and we're just going to click on that red keyframe and just bring it up like so. So now it will have four phases to go through. And there we go. We can now double click on main timeline to come back out here and we can come in here and test this. Now when we jump to 
frame six or wherever past frame zero on the timeline, it's going to change this pointed finger and that's because the dial is set to up and that's when the pointed finger is meant to go. But now you can see we can come in here and we can easily just change this on the fly so that way we don't have to go through the layers to get to that particular hand group and switch it out. And you can do that if you wish, it's still possible. However, since we are working with a lot of dials and bones here, it just seems to make more sense to set this up as a dial. I think it'll allow for quicker animation moving forward. So now we're going to do the same for the second hand bone here. Let's just click on it first and go to our angle constraints. And again, I'm going to switch this to negative 30 and 30. And you can expand that if you need to, but I feel this is a good middle ground for what we're doing. We have that bone selected. We can create a new action. It's going to name it the same as the bone. Come over here to our bone. We're just going to go all the way back to the left and then, get, and then go one, two, three, four. Actually, we just want to go to frame four, just like that, and then bring it in. So one, two, three, four, there we go. Coming over here now to the layers, we can go down to the back hand. It's right there. And we can come in now and just go down the line like we did before with the other bone. Just go in a frame. You can use your arrow keys to go back and forth on frames. And then just right click and then choose the next layer or switch within that group that you want to go to. And there you go. We now have the hands set up. Let's double click to go back to our main line. And the last thing we can adjust here is the mouth. I'll click on that mouth bone. Let's make sure we're on the bone layer. If you ever can't click on a bone, like I can't right now, and it's like, what's going on here? It's simply because you don't have the bone layer selected. It's something, again, that can easily happen sometimes. So just make sure you're on that bone layer. Click on the mouth switch bone. We'll come in here, and for our angle constraints, we'll change this to negative 90 and 90. We'll start with something like that. And then with that bone still selected, and then we have our actions panel right here, we can create a new action for the mouth switch. It of course names it appropriately. On frame one, we can move the dial down to the left. And I believe we have eight poses. So we wanna to go to, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, to frame nine, and just bring it over like that. Actually, I think I might have one too many, but we'll find out here in a moment. So let's come over here now to the head and we want to find the mouth. And again, just like the hands, we're just going to come in here and make these changes. So I'll start with the close pose on frame one, go to frame two, change it to ETC, frame three, QUW, frame four, O, frame five, E, frame six, TH, frame seven, FV, frame eight, AI. So now we have the ability to come in here and just easily adjust that. And I believe, once again, going back here to my bone layer, that this bone is one frame off from where it needs to be. So I'm just gonna grab that red frame and drag it back to eight. So it just kind of goes like that. And there we are. We now have those mouth poses in place. And again, this will be useful when creating actions, not so much for lip syncing, but you know, let's say you have an action where he's landing or he hits, he gets hit by something. You might want him to grit his teeth. That would be in this case where that dial would come in. And I think this can be useful in that case. So we're just gonna go with that. And we can go back out here to the main line. Let me just find my actions panel. And finally, I'll take these three switches and we'll bring it over inside of the action dials folder. Just come in and drag and drop like that. So now all of these are the dials we have for the rig that we can control. And then we have everything else organized effectively as well. And just one more small thing, while still on that bone layer on the main line, I'm going to grab the select bone tool, hold and shift, and click on these three new bones that I just laid out for this video and go up to show label. So now I can easily tell what those are. I don't have to guess. 
And going forward now, I'm going to be saving the rig each step of the way. And to start with that, let's just use Control Shift S to create a save here. And from here on out, I'm going to be saving the file every step of the way. So that way you can follow the breadcrumb trail back if you ever need to. And to do this, since I do have an image in the background, I'm just going to go up to File and Gather Media. Gather Media is effectively saving as, except here I'm bringing all the images or any of the media with me. And we can come in here. I'm just going to name this one O2 Chad Actions Library and then hit Save. It'll be in its own little folder where you can access it inside of your exercise files. And again, I'll be using that file next and we'll be moving forward and saving every step of the way. So up next, we're going to jump in and start laying down some step poses or morphs to help us build up our library. And there's definitely more to learn with this course. We go through build up an actions library. We talk about the different action types. We talk about what actions are more appropriate for others. We even build an optional actions dial if you wish to go that route. So there's a lot to cover in this two and a half hour course. Please click the link in the top comment to check it out and receive 20% off.